Hi, I'm Carly. And I'm Mitch. And this, this is Tesla. Tesla. And together we're Garnet Geckos. So here at Garnet Geckos, we're working on a breeding project this upcoming year for uh, Lily White and Red Harlequin Crested Geckos. Um, so I'm kind of responsible for maintaining and figuring out what we're doing with that. And then I'm also in charge of the research and development here, as well as our graphic design and photography. We're on our rescue and rehabilitation program. We have a few current residents that I can't wait to introduce you to. And then I also could say that I'm at fault for all of our personal reptiles. Yeah. Um, the more <laughs> unique in our collection, like our bearded dragon, our blue tongue skink, our red eyed crocodile skink, our Madagascar day gecko, and one of our ball pythons. How many is that? You skipped your fingers around. I did not. It was five. Anyways, so today we're going to film um, and show you guys how we build a bioactive enclosure for Crested Gecko. I hope you guys will stay tuned and check it out. Can't wait. Let's get started. We started by filling in a layer of lava rocks. They're pretty light compared to river rocks, which we've used in the past and they act as a drainage layer. This helps with humidity and helps us avoid mold. Next, we added a layer of mesh, which keeps the substrate from falling through the drainage layer. It's also helpful for when we need to change the substrate. For our substrate, we used plantation soil mixed with some forest floor. We use a variety of live plants in our vivariums. Snake plants are the tall one that you see in this video. They're also known as mother-in-law's tongues. Uh, the snake plant is super easy to take care of and reptile safe. They're the ideal house plant. They don't attract many other bugs and only require indirect sunlight. The smaller succulents are called hens and chicks. We buy them by the tray at our local home improvement store's garden section and we let them sit for seven to 10 days before using them in our builds. I really like them because they're small. They really work well on like the foreground of an enclosure. Here at Garnet Geckos, we keep our juvenile and male crested geckos in bioactive enclosures. I think that this is really good for them. Um, it provides lots of enrichment and mimics their natural habitat as closely as possible. I feel like there's something really intriguing about a like gecko, skink, or even a snake who has just a completely natural environment. The way that they move and they graze their bodies across every single branch, leaf, like they just like touch everything. And I've I've never seen an animal that's been kept in you know like an enclosure with shelf liner or um, paper towel behave that way. Now our females, we keep them on um, shelf liner with a layer of paper towel, but they also have like like natural plants in there as well as a laid bin. So for our females, we're not really able to accomplish that because we want to know where their eggs are. Um, but for all of our male and juvenile geckos, they are kept in their own enclosures. Um, I like them to be front opening so that I can go and I can visit with them. Um, top opening enclosures don't really do that. If you look over here, you could probably see my leopard gecko enclosures. We're working on a project where we're building bookcases for them. We use isopods in all of our bioactive enclosures. Out of our current collection, we decided to use our powder orange isos because they're just breeding so well. We set up each enclosure with plenty of leaf litter in hopes that the geckos won't eat all the hard workers inside. We also make sure this substrate layer includes plenty of cuttlebone pieces, cork bark, magnolia leaves, magnolia pods, oak leaves, and of course the isopods themselves in varying ages from younglings to the full size ones. We added wood branches, a large piece of cork bark, and a crap ton of plastic greenery to his enclosure. Some of my favorite things to add to an arboreal gecko enclosure are hanging coconut hides, for nap time of course, and an elevated food dish is always preferred 
but I like to do this simplistic suction cup leaf feeder. We missed all of our tropical reptiles twice a day. We call these daily routines reptile morning and reptile bedtime. These processes also include the typical feeding schedule as well as any day-to-day -day maintenance, such as filling water bowls or misting wet hides. We use pieces of wire that you can get from your local dollar store or hardware store to fasten things like coconut hides, fake plants, or vines to the mesh roof of the enclosures. And there you have it. That's how we build a crested gecko bioactive enclosure. Stick around to see more fun clips and to see this week's featured crested geckos. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we also have a link in the bio that's for our Patreon subscription. If you join our VIP or Super Patreon tiers between now and December 1st, you'll receive a free gift shipped by me um, that'll just be like a little welcome to our, to our channel. Thank you so much.